I love coming here. All right, folks, thank you for your attention. I think we have the majority here, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Curtis, if you didn't catch in the very beginning. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to mention some of the larger things and then give you an opportunity to look around and check it out yourself. Uh, first off, uh, I want to point out these two rovers that we have in front of us. Uh, to date, JPL has sent three different versions of rovers to Mars. Uh, these represent the very first two. The very first one we sent to Mars is actually a small little guy that you see over there. You may better know it as the Pathfinder Sojourner. The mission itself was called Pathfinder, the rover was called Sojourner. So that's the Sojourner rover. That's exactly the same size as the real thing. It looks just like it, but that thing, it's only a model. There's nothing on the inside, it doesn't move, it's not real, but it gives you an idea of how large the actual real thing was. And as you can see, it's about the size of a, uh, a child's wagon or so. Um, at, that was what we refer to as a, sci uh, a technology mission. Here at JPL, we have two types of missions. We either have a science mission, and a science mission would be like the rover is looking for life on the surface of Mars. That's a science goal, it's a science mission. That other one, the small little guy, was what we refer to as a technology mission. And technology missions are missions where we're just trying to prove if this technology we just uh, invented actually works or not. And we're not necessarily looking for any specific science goals. We want to see if it's going to work. And the whole purpose of that was to prove we could actually land on the surface of Mars with a bouncing airbag system. You guys might have seen that thing looks like a big bouncy ball, kind of bounces on the surface of Mars. After it rolls, it deflates, and then the whole thing opens up and the rovers come out. That's actually the uh, lander portion for this one. You can see in the back right there in the corner is actually for this one. But what happened is that first small little one proved we can actually do that and we could, it would actually work. We could actually remote control a rover on the surface of Mars. <laughs> After we proved all that, we took everything we learned from that and increased it, made it bigger, and then added more stuff on it, and we ended up with two of them. And that became what we refer to as the Mars Exploration Rovers. That's these guys right here. And you might better know them by their nicknames, Spirit or Opportunity. Both of them were actually uh, twins. They looked exactly the same. So this is what we refer to as a composite. It represents both because um, they basically look the same. Um, this is also full scale, same size, real thing. It looks just like it. But just like the one next to it, it's only a model. There's nothing on the inside that does move. But it gives you an idea for the size of the actual things. Um, now you'll notice both of these are solar powered. And the solar panels work really well. The problem with solar panels though, solar panels only work in the daytime. At night, they don't work. And just like here on Earth, there's a nighttime on Mars. And just like here on Earth, solar panels don't work at night uh, on Mars. So what that means is these rovers here actually have to hibernate. That means they have to go to sleep at night. Otherwise, if you keep them running in the middle of the night, we'll actually run down the batteries, we'll kill the rovers. So in order for them to last longer, both of these uh, rovers actually had to go to sleep in the middle of the night. So they would hibernate. They would wait till the next morning, they would wake up, and they start working again. The other problem is Mars has seasons like we have here on Earth. So during the winter time on Mars, the days are shorter, it's really cold, there's not a lot of sunlight. So these rovers, they're like bears, they actually hibernate in the winter. <laughs> they will go to sleep, they will wait till the spring, they wake up, they start working again. So for half the year and half of every single day, we can't really do very much with these because they're reliant on the, solar, uh, on, on the sun. Uh, so what, later on we're going to see the new rover. If you remember the video we saw, that's the big one that kind of uh, landed on Mars with a jetpack on its back and it kind of lowered itself on the surface, right? Uh, you guys might better know it as Curiosity, that's the nickname they gave it. Uh, well that rover, that's like the big brother to this. This one you can see it's five feet long, the real one it weighed a little less than 400 pounds. The new one we're going to see, it's about 10 feet long, it weighs close to 2,000 pounds. So uh, this one we like to compare it to a, a golf cart because that's about how big it is. The new one we compare it to an SUV because that's how big <laughs> that one is, right? Now the other difference between the two is not just the size, but the power source. As I mentioned, these are solar powered, but the other one we decided to give it the RTG or radioisotope thermal electric generator or the nuclear battery you saw similar to the one on Voyager. By giving the new one a nuclear battery, that one can now work in the day or the night on Mars. Mm. It can work in the summer or the winter. Now we can drive for miles and not worry about killing the battery on it. And for the very first time, we can actually run an experiment in the middle, in the middle of the night. Something these ones could never do because they're solar powered, right? So we'll talk about that new one later on, point out the differences and what it did when we see the new, uh, new one a little bit later in one of the other stocks, okay? In a second, we're going to give you a chance to look around, but before I do, if you look above the rover, you see that gold thing? You guys see that? Yeah. That's actually part of an experiment called a magnetometer. It studies the magnetic fields of planets. And in a second, you can walk around the wall here, and when you do, you're going to notice that gold thing is attached to a really big long arm that's attached to a really big giant spacecraft called Galileo. If you remember the video we saw next door, that's the one that went to Jupiter. This one's a full-scale model. Same size real thing looks just like it, but it's only a model. There's nothing on the inside, it doesn't actually move, but it gives an idea of just how large the actual thing was flying around Jupiter. Um, now, uh, as you walk around as well, 
behind this wall, there's a flat screen. As you walk around, I'm going to put a movie called Seven Minutes of Terror. It talks about how that new rover landed on Mars. Um, if you want to watch it, you're free to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Because we're going to talk about the same stuff when we see the rover a little bit later on. Um, if you stay where you're at, just turn around real quick, you'll notice there's a big picture of our sun right here. It's referred to as being our star. And that's because that's the closest star to us. As you walk around the room in a clockwise order, meaning you walk here right, walking towards me this way, the room is set up in the order, proper order of each of the planets. At each planet, there's a marble. For example, if you look over here towards Mars, you'll notice this is supposed to be Mars right here. So if the sun is as large as that image you see in the picture, then Mars would be about the size of this thing right here. And as you walk around, you're gonna see the other marbles that give you a sense of scale. There's Mercury over there, Venus, there's Earth over here, there's the Moon, and then when you make your way further down this way, you'll get to Jupiter, and it'll give you an idea of how big it is, roughly about the size of a basketball, a little bit bigger, right? So, now, um, as you walk around as well, you're gonna see some cool stuff, like over here on the right, there's a moon rock. Right next to it, there's a shovel that was taken from a spacecraft called Surveyor. It spent three years on the Moon when the Apollo 12 astronauts landed. Part of their mission was to go to that spacecraft Surveyor, remove pieces and then take it back. That's one of the parts they took off. So that was actually the kind of scooper in the front of the shovel. So when you look at it, you'll see there's kind of dust on it. That's real moon dust on it. Hmm. Um, as you make your way further down, you're going to see there's uh, samples of meteorite samples. There's also a sample of something called aerogel, something JPL helped to develop. It holds six world's records for man-made solids, 99.8% made out of air. It's a good thermal insulator. So, for example, the inside body of this rover is aligned with that so we can control the internal temperatures. Mm -hmm. uh, as you walk around on the opposite side of the room over there, there's an infrared camera. Those are like those night vision goggles soldiers will use. Uh, when you stand in front of it, it looks for things that are hot. The parts of your body that are hottest are white and red. The parts that are colder is going to be blue and green. As you walk around, I just ask a couple rules. Please don't touch the models. They're very expensive. They break easy. Um, there's touch screens you guys want to check out. Uh, the handles underneath are headphones. You can listen to them. Um, you can touch any of the touch screens except for the one on the other side of this wall. This is a controller for the video. So I just ask you, please don't play with that. Only the tour guys will, will use that one. Okay? All the other ones you guys can check out. If you need to use the restrooms across the way, we're going to give everybody about 10 or 15 minutes, and then we're going to move to our next talk. Okay? Awesome. If you have questions, just come up to the tour guide. So feel free to go ahead and look around, check everything out.